the only currency you have with your family is your time. And you know what? It's valuable. And if you don't want to spend your time on somebody who makes you feel less than, smaller, and even if that person, in this case, doesn't remember, has dementia, that doesn't mean that she wasn't fucking cruel. And to you, it can be buzzword triggering. Mm -hmm. And you don't need any other reason. There's no reason to subject yourself in a world where we're constantly being bombarded with things telling us that we're less than, not worthy enough, or not smart enough to have somebody that's supposed to be your ally Mm -hmm. have said that yeah you can fucking say yep you know what i'm focusing on loving myself enough so that this child that i'm raising never has to feel any doubt about how much i love them and how much i love myself which is only going to make them love themselves more hey guys my name is katie enterkin and i'm on a mission to help humans become the best possible versions of themselves and to unveil what I like to call the beautiful beast that already lives inside us all. And welcome to the podcast about everything and a little bit of nothing. I've had the privilege to talk to all kinds of different humans who have been through a plethora, oh, I love big words, a myriad of experiences just being a human and existing. These are real conversations with real people, getting to know each other, sharing stories that make us cry, and occasionally pee our pants with laughter. We talk about all kinds of life stuff, parenthood, business, life goals, fitness, chasing your dreams, and yes, even some animal noises are involved. For more information, keep listening. This is the Unveiling the Beast podcast. Oh, hey, welcome back. In today's episode of the Unveiling the Beast podcast, I'm hanging out with someone who I only know as a little sister, Megan White. This lady is the epitome of perseverance. In the beginning, we go down memory lane a bit and talk about things like, oh, I don't know, smoking our lawn rolled in colored construction paper at a seemingly abandoned elementary school. And then she tells her story about being a 32-year-old cancer survivor. What in the actual world? Not only did she survive cancer, she was one out of 161 people to have that kind of cancer in the last 30 years. Believe it or not, that's not the kicker. The other 160 people who had that kind of cancer were old men who smoked and drank for the majority of their lives. Other topics we discussed were stories about our moms because they were besties, the relationships we have with our bodies and food, her famous dog named Karen, and... We had a really interesting Q&A between a parent and a non-parent who doesn't plan on having kids. Megan is spunky and honest and straightforward and doesn't let little things like cancer get in the way of living her best life. She will make you laugh. She will make you cry. And I promise, she will even make you cringe a little with her twisted and glorious sense of humor. So, as always, I hope something lands with you today. I hope something you hear tugs on your heartstrings and or I hope you laugh. Ladies and gentlemen. I thought you were going to say ladies and germs. Ladies and germs. I am with Megan White. White. Yep. Megan White. Yeah. And she is basically my sister from another mister and another mom. Wait. Um, Another mother. Another. Cousin from another muzzin. (laughs) Another sister from a different. What did you say earlier? Two. Old men? (laughs) A a sister from a different curmudgeon older mister. I love you, John. Yes. John would be my father. Yes. Jack was my dad. So John and Jack. Characters. What in the ass? (laughs) Characters, those two. I'm not going to say anything incriminating. Yeah. You know what's really fun, though? Like, when when you're talking... (laughs) When we're talking... And you look at the mic. It makes it, it makes it more powerful if you look at the mic while you're well, talking. Well, also, we're between it. The mic is attached to a palm tree. Yeah. Is that real? Oh, yeah. Oh, I'm proud of you. I love plants. You know. I'm what they call a green witch. Just so you know. You know, I once, well, I house sit for my mom sometimes, and she has me take care of the plants. Oh, yeah. And I kill plants. Oh, yeah. It's- so 
I kind of overdid it, and I was watering her fake trees. Because I didn't know. You didn't I know. didn't know. You're like, it's kind of dusty, but maybe that's the color. Uh, I, today, went to our garbage room. I live in an apartment building. There's like a trash chute, and people are lazy, and they put all kinds of shit in there. Uh, including a giant tree that they no longer want to take care of. What? So I dragged it back to the apartment. Oh, yeah. When you all check out my Instagram underscore baby broccoli underscore, you'll see that I have saved. <laughs> if Katie's figured out how to link it in the bottom, <laughs> you'll find it there. Uh, you so must have listened to episode one. <laughs> I was the one listener, actually. Oh, okay. It okay. really felt like you guys were talking to me. <laughs> I would reply. Felt ignored. Uh <laughs> But yeah, so I dragged this tree back, and I was like, I'll save you, so we'll see how it goes. But yeah, I used to be really bad uh, with plants also, and actually, uh, I don't know if the listeners know, uh, your mom is highly involved with AA and Al-Anon, mm-hmm. and my mom and your mom live together, so we live together, we have kids. Mm-hmm. I don't know if my <laughs> listeners know that. Okay, actually, this is what I was going to say off air. Do you, <laughs> this is so crazy that I remember this. Do you remember the day we met? Wasn't it at the Boys and Girls Club? Yes, we were standing in front of a vending machine, and one of us, and this I don't remember. Vending machine sounds accurate. (laughs) One of us got Funyuns. Oh, that sounds accurate, too. Yeah, and somebody said, uh, someone else said, if you give me one of those, I'll be your best friend, and we both kind of were like, um, no. (laughs) Then preceded our friendship, but I don't know if our mothers will remember or agree, but we're the reason they ended up meeting because we knew that our both of our parents had just recently got divorced. Mm-hmm. And uh, somehow, as me being four and you being six, we knew that our mothers were looking for roommates. What? <laughs> Why would... <laughs> oh, by the way, yes, we've known each other for that long. So yes. this is like... 30 years. Oh, God. I mean, I... We look great. We look great. We look great. Well, but, from here up, I look okay. <laughs> you know, uh, I uh, I was told to quit using, like, my retinol, retinol cream through radiation and chemo, and I was like, yeah, sorry. Uh, no, I'm going to... If I'm only on this earth for a little bit longer, it's still going to be vain. <laughs> but, yeah, so uh, we both were aware that our moms were looking to subsidize their housing <laughs> situation. <laughs> And introduced our moms, which led to them being roommates for f- five years? Yeah, five years in Huntington Beach. I drove past there, like, maybe a year ago. Drove past the house? Yeah. Sandpiper Lane. Do you remember the lady that lived in the cul-de-sac that we thought was a witch? Yeah. I wonder if she's still alive. Remember when we used to smoke grass at that school? Like, yes. literally lawn grass, and I don't... I try not to say literally a lot, because I think that word is overused. No, but it was actually lawn grass. But it was literally... <laughs> green lawn grass wrapped in construction paper. I think the construction paper part is the most disturbing to me now. <laughs> like, the thing we didn't, well, I didn't inhale. Did you inhale? Oh, I can't imagine. I can't, <laughs> I can't imagine that I did. But, like, still, like, yeah, I'm, I'm most disturbed by the chemicals in that situation from the dyed paper of the early, early 90s. <laughs> yeah. I used to, do you know it only occurred, this is so stupid, I used to think that school was abandoned. Really? Every time we'd go <laughs> There was never any kids there, probably because they were also not in school when exactly. we were in school. Yeah. But that, like, That's dawned funny. on me a band. <laughs> when I was, like, 25. I was like, oh, they just weren't there because it wasn't school hours, which is why I was allowed to be there. Because <laughs> it wasn't my school. 25, huh? <laughs> yeah. Well, you know, it's like, you, like, have these, like, ideas from a memory, and then you're like, oh, I'm so dumb. You're like, of course yeah. it wasn't abandoned or hot. Like, and whatever. <laughs> Oh, it was so fun, though, going over there and riding our bikes. Almost getting hit by cars, you know. I think we were, like, investigating it, too, which is maybe why I thought it was abandoned. Yeah. Yeah. We were spying on the school, I think, in some cases. I think now, as an adult, I would go back and, like, be ghost hunting and shit. Yeah, yeah. It's not abandoned, abandoned school. It's haunted. I I think about, I'm like, why did I think? Of course that's Did you know that's where my dad got his GED when he was 53? At that school? At that school. Which would have had to have been when we were living there, right? Yeah. Well, actually, it might have been before my parents got divorced. So maybe wow. before you lived with us. He got his GED. That, what did he do before that? Like, I mean, like, just a hustler? <laughs> I mean, just, you know what I mean? Like, in every sense of the word? He, like, 
my dad's been all over the place, but still tells stories from Rockford, Illinois. Wow. From 50 years ago. Like, he's stuck in that. <clears throat> Where did they meet? Rose and Joe. In a bar. Oh, okay. <laughs> she was the bartender, and oh God, that she, is wore, so... she wore hot pants, and he would order specific beer that they kept in a cooler because my mom never bent her knees. Well, she's... Do you remember... <laughs> Your mom was in a cl- in a club or a social group when we were kids for people that are six feet tall or taller. Oh yeah! And my mom was always like, <laughs> she was like five just, eight. Wasn't it just like strategically named the tall people's club or something? I don't know. I don't, my, I don't remember that part. But oh wait, what was I saying about Al-Anon? Oh, oh the yeah. Plants. By the way, squirrels and shiny things in this conversation oh, also, yeah, it's right? Oh, it's all over yeah, the place. Yeah, yeah, So, uh, I myself have never been a part of the 12-step program, though I have gone to, like, conventions with you guys, and, like, uh, I'm quite aware of it. And I know that, like, in the first year of sobriety, you're not supposed to be in a relationship. Mm-hmm. And then the next step is, can you keep a damn plant alive? And then the next step is, can you fucking manage to keep a pet alive? <laughs> And once you've accomplished these things, then you are uh, on some plane allowed to now try to pursue some sort of responsible adult relationship. So I didn't really follow that. But when I was able to start keeping plants alive, I was like, I fucking get it. I'm grown up now. People, watch out. But I did have a dog and a, and a life partner at that point. So it was exactly backwards. But uh, it did. It's. In my mind, it's a signifier of emotional maturity and availability yeah. and selflessness. Yeah, especially with plants, because plants are easily forgettable. Oh, yeah, Except I, for yours, because yours kind of look like they're taking over your house. I propagate them. There's like, I bought that, that. I'm pointing at a very large philodendron hanging in the corner, and I have, oh, probably like, all th- and in my bedroom there's quite a few too, I probably have 12 or 13 different philodendron plants that I have snipped off of that one plant and grown oh, from. So that's cool. Because I'm cheap. I don't want to buy more. No, I just want to no. keep. <laughs> You're nifty. Yeah, I know. <laughs> but yeah, I know. It's a... Uh, I do love I do love the plants. But but yeah, so... I Yeah, I, don't, I just... It, it's, it feels so appropriate that the, my... When I... When I go back to the, my early <laughs> back memories in the day. of us, I think of a vending machine in that hallway. Oh, vending machines. it just wasn't food that was allowed in our house so yeah funyuns were always special to me because only the other kids had funyuns in their lunch and Mm -hmm. i'd always if it was somebody i knew i'd be like can i have one yeah can i have one yeah right like i don't think my mom ever (laughs) once even to this day has bought me a bag of funyuns that's child abuse yeah that's that's neglect yeah Uh, neglect that's what i should say (laughs) By the way, listener, I'm joking. Gross negligence. Yeah. <laughs> oh, you're so. Mom. You know, I think Funyuns is a perfect segue into um, how we were reunited and what's happened since then. Okay. Yeah. So, in February of 2018. 18. I came here to run a half marathon with my sister. Okay. So I grew up here in California, and then uh, when right before I started high school, my mom and I moved back to Minneapolis, where she's from, and then I stayed there until a year and a half ago. My husband's actually from California too, but we met in Minnesota. That's funny. That's where her slight accent comes from. Oh, I can really amp it up for you guys if you. (laughs) No, I don't think I can so much anymore. But so I ran a half marathon with my sister, and she was like, "Why don't you move back?" And I was like, what will we do here? And then <laughs> she was like... If you guys could see her face, it looks like she... Yeah. It's, it's, it looks exactly. like she smells something bad, but that's another story. She can't smell anything. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that's anyway, true. continue. So she was like, well, you Collier could do this, this, and this, and you're in sales, and so you can sell anything. And I was like, oh, okay, that's fine. And so we ended up doing it, and we were like, fuck it. So we moved back to California... In July, or I guess August 1st of 2018. And then in January of 2019, my mom, who had Alzheimer's for about nine years at that point, uh, and she had 
cancer a few times throughout her life, was diagnosed with basically like stage four cancer all throughout her body. And at her stage of Alzheimer's, it would be inhumane, in my opinion, uh, to put somebody who doesn't understand what is happening yeah. through now that I personally know how traumatizing can- cancer treatment. So she ended up passing away uh, a month later in February of this year. And then, in a true, true twist of irony, I was diagnosed with cancer in March. Uh, I was diagnosed with small cell carcinoma. Now, what's that cancer itself is not uncommon. In fact, it's the most common lung cancer that people get. Mm-hmm. What is uncommon is that it was in my larynx, so specifically in my voice box, which is giving me this That's smoker, sexy. smoker's voice. <laughs> and... Uh, <clears throat> Do that again. Go again. The smoker's voice. <laughs> I could just do this for the rest of the episode. Richard, do you know what this this character is called? <laughs> La Fonda. Well, I thought it was um, Marge's sister. Oh, the twins? Yeah. <clears throat> Sisters. God, what are their names? I don't know. They rhyme. I don't remember. Anyway. Anyway. I digress to you. No, that's okay. <clears throat> Which is also why I keep clearing my throat. So, uh, I am one of 161 people worldwide in the last... 30 years to have small cell carcinoma of the larynx. I'm also the youngest to ever have it. Uh, I'm 32. And uh, so from May 1st until July 3rd, I was going through chemotherapy and radiation. And because, you know what picture you should put up there also is the picture with the Helter Skelter mask on that oh, I had to wear yeah. for radiation. I love that picture. Oh, and by the way, we... <clears throat> well, mostly Megan, but we both have very twisted ways of dealing with <laughs> um, hardships, I guess. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I would say death and uh, loss in, all, in every single facet possible has been a common thread throughout my life and has... Paired with my truly a gift from the heaven sense of humor, which we'll all come to find out, uh, tends to be not for everybody. When I can speak very bluntly about the loss of a parent, a sibling, a friend being murdered, or going through cancer, there people are really uncomfortable with how bluntly I speak mm-hmm. about death, mortality. Yeah. I Don't say, forget our dance teacher that was murdered. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Her fucking son, you guys chopped her up, put her into garbage bags, and threw her into a man-made lake in, like, fucking Costa Mesa. How dismal. Did they find her? I think they found her. Yeah, I, I, they must have. I, I mean, it's possible that I made that part up because of how my brain is, but I don't think they... I don't think I made that up. <laughs> I was gonna say, all these years. <clears throat> yeah, that's another story. And that's, like, the... Fr- like, I guess, like, that might be one of the first times I was confronted with death. Mm-hmm. And, like... That's the kind of thing that, like, will tra- traumatize somebody for a lifetime. I'm like, oh, yeah, my fucking dance teacher was murdered. Can you believe By that? her son. I remember. Do you remember him coming in, like, abruptly into dance class and, like, rifling through her shit? I remember playing tetherball with him once. Oh, he was, like... Knowing that he was not a good guy, because my mom was really good friends with Myra, our dance teacher. Her name God, was I forgot her name was Myra. Yeah, my mom was really me, good friends with her. In my mind... I picture a combination of Flojo Gainer, the, like, Olympic athlete runner, who would wear, like, one, like, her her running outfits would be, like, one leg was bare, and then leggings down one side, and they were okay. bright colors, and she had long nails, and then also Grace Jones. It's like a combination of Grace Jones and Flojo is how I remember Myra. Um, but yeah, so I went through cancer treatment. I mean, I couldn't swallow my own saliva. So I, like, was going through all this chemotherapy and radiation and, um, like you do, you lose your hair. And I, because my radiation was in my voice box, it zapped my, like, saliva producers. Mm -hmm. And also, I couldn't swallow my own saliva, so I was using a feeding tube for the majority of the summer. And like Katie referenced earlier, I don't have a sense of smell. I was born without it. It's called anosmia, which means I can taste, but I can't smell. It's not uncommon. Thank God, because I have really bad. <laughs> I was. I smell like onions. I was like, I, 
I better brush my teeth for this. <laughs> um, we're speaking closely on a, this tiny mic, but it's not as close as it sounds. <laughs> Richard was being dramatic in episode one. Um, so one in about a thousand people suffer, suffer, I know, are afflicted. Suffer. They, they have a <laughs> I'm suffering. I can't smell anything. I, people go, like, like, even, like, if I fart, no, bro. Like, you ask a blind person, like, if this color is, like, neon, can mm-hmm. you see it? It's, it's no, there's bl- total blindness. I have total nose blindness. Yeah. Um which is fine. I mean, I've never smelled anything. I, I don't. I guess the only, it's a little nerve wracking because Collier's come home and we've had gas stuff. He's been like, open the window. The house is full of gas. The pile is on. I've been like, I feel a little woozy. I guess that makes sense. Um, and like, I can't smell smoke. So like if something's burning, it's you a don't problem. Know. Yeah. Unless you see it. Yeah. And so, uh, but then I also lost my sense of taste, but it was fine because I couldn't really eat anything anyhow. But um, I was watching a lot of cooking shows throughout the summer. But I don't know. Uh, so I don't know. It was pretty shitty. I lost like thirty pounds, and this is a, this is a, 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 an example of where people are like, "You need to stop saying that. It's not funny." I like leading up to cancer treatment. I was like, "Doctor, tell me how much weight do you think I'm gonna lose?" <laughs> are we thinking thirty, forty, fifty pounds? I mean, I'm excited. <laughs> and my friend Ashley would be like, "It's not fucking funny. Can't it be like." And I'm like, "It." Look, I've struggled with my weight my whole fucking life. If this is it, if this is the thing that gets me into a size 8, then hot damn, let's do it. Cancer diet. I know. And people talk about my new joke. Uh, Audience, I also am what I... I was a college athlete. I played soccer in college. i very athletic. uh, But I've also, uh, you know, I've been blessed with being orcish. I'm short and squat. I like to say I'm hard to knock over literally and figuratively. <laughs> but I'm in the best shape of my life now. Thank you, cancer. Uh, but I do power lift. I take weightlifting very seriously. And so uh, it was pretty upsetting to lose the muscle. Yeah. On top. And, yeah. and, and like I ride a scooter, like a Vespa. And I wasn't strong enough to, like, hold myself up on... Like, the, I wasn't strong enough to keep the, the, the scooter upright. Mm. Or I would get tired walking around the block uh, with my dogs. Which, as you can tell, listeners, they are a handful. Um, <clears throat> so, like, y- you know, yes, I'm glad I'm smaller because I have a vision of what I think my beauty standards are. But do I suggest everybody go through chemotherapy and radiation and a feeding tube to get there? No, not at all. (laughs) Do I suggest if you have to, to be able to fucking laugh at yourself? Yes, because if you don't, you're already dead. Yep. If you can't laugh, if I can't, I mean, and and this is a big stretch and this is an an example of where I'm like, I get it, it's not for everybody. If I can't laugh at the irony of my mom, who had been suffering from Alzheimer's for like almost a decade, dying of cancer, and then me getting diagnosed with cancer a month later. Yeah. And not only just cancer, but, like, a very rare cancer. And what were your chances of survival? Oh, yeah, uh, between 5 and 12%. Yeah. But I had my first PET scan a month ago, probably, I think. Yeah. And uh, in, like, the most exciting, emotional, enthusiastic way, my doctor said, we have complete resolution. And I had to go, does that mean there's no cancer? Mm -hmm. And she was like, yeah. And I was like, okay, great. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. By the way, when you posted that video on... You did do a YouTube video, right? Yep, I did it. I, I did it on my phone, but yeah. Cried. <laughs> I was like crying too. Like a baby. I was like, my sister's okay. I was at work and. Um, I'm not crying I, right now. You're crying. <laughs> I sell I sell cars for a living, so, uh, you know, there's a lot of like emotional and like there's a lot of you know, people are draining. People are fucking draining, and so yeah. there's a lot of bonding that goes on with your coworkers, and also there's a level of competitiveness because it's car sales but uh i got hired at that job march 19th and was diagnosed with cancer march 27th (laughs) but the general manager of that dealership was my general manager at harley okay and he was he quit like abruptly and i was like oh okay bye bro weird and then like a day after he quit he's like hey do you want to come sell cars at toyota so <clears throat> he recruited me to come work for him. So I was lucky enough to uh, be at a place where 
I had an advocate. I wasn't just a new employee. Yeah. And uh, so they, I went on medical leave May 1st, and I, came, I went back to work August 1st. And that feels like a fucking lifetime ago. I mean, you know, you, I mean, as you people can imagine in sales, especially car sales, it's like high energy, high intensity, and you know, when you have qu- like sales quotas, that's what you live by. And so now I'm like looking at okay, well, I'm this close to hitting October's goal, and it's like okay, well, August and September they're in the past. And I, yeah, as soon as I'm back into work, it was like, I. It just feels like the can the cancer is in the past, and I think that that might be really frustrating for friends and family and my husband who are feelers. I mean, I'm I'm an empathetic person too, and I, I but I'm also like high kick, high kick. This you know, like I'm just like go go go, and so I wonder often if perhaps me just being like, okay, we're on to the next thing, which is how I've been my whole life. If that's hard for people in my life, but. Anyway, I'm back at work, and that's been great, but you know, now I'm, like, working through the, now this is the therapy. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I've, I'm, I'm wondering, like, am I being generous enough with people about their experience with my cancer? Because, again, I mean, starting from our dance teacher getting murdered, and then it was like, my dad died when I was 10, my brother died when I was 15, uh, like, I had a friend murdered when I was 21, and like all kinds of other stuff too so but so I'm always just like well that happened now now what you're like you're like Meredith Grey in Grey's Anatomy I don't know if you watched that oh yeah her mom had Alzheimer's too eh, everybody dies yeah all this crap happens to her and she's like all right what's next yeah I'm funnier than her though yeah you are funnier (laughs) but she goes to see a counselor and he's like trying to counsel her she's like really I'm fine and he's like, you're just, you're not letting it out. Blah, blah, blah. She's like, I'm fine. Like, this yeah. is after her husband died. I don't know if you watched the show. Which I'm a big crazy guy. Is that fan. Dr. McDreamy? He gets shot, doesn't he? Well, he gets shot, but he didn't die in that episode. He dies later on. Is that when, show still on the air? Yeah. I'm, we're behind two seasons because we but have a two-year-old. But it is still, year-old. like, actively <laughs> on. Like, they, it is still on, like, what, yeah. NBC or whatever it was on, yeah. right? Oh, my God. When I, my soccer team in high school, like, the travel team that I was on, I played with the same girls for years. We're obsessed with it. And it was like before you could DVR something. So they had to change <laughs> our our practice schedule because on Sunday for nights. For Grey's Anatomy. Yeah, girls just quit coming to <laughs> soccer practice. That's funny. It's ridiculous. I mean, that's, that's like. That's funny. That's a long time for a show to be on the air. Yeah. But, Holy. you know, spoiler alert, everybody dies in that show. Spoiler alert, everybody dies, period. Yeah. So if you can't laugh about I'm it, I'm not going to get out alive. <laughs> We're all born to be uh, born to uh, I was going to therapy, right, like, leading up to being sick. And it was the first time that I had, like, a therapist. And Before and, you found out you were sick? Yeah. Okay. But my voice had already started to get, like... When you had allergies? <clears throat> yeah, which is... I thought it was That's the fucking we thought Santa it was allergies. Wins. When we had our reunite, reun, re, reunion, reunion dinner, we had spaghetti. It feels so good. Sorry. Um, she came to our house and she sounded like this. Yeah. And she was just like, oh yeah, I've had allergies. I had a cold. Like we had no idea that there was a cancer plant in her throat. Yeah. So. And I, th- you know, I mean like another thing of, of irony, and I said this before, I went to college for radio broadcasting and I ended up being a fine dining server for about nine or ten Ooh. years. And then I transitioned into sales. Literally, all of that is 100% based on your ability to communicate clearly and efficiently. Yes. And when the second doctor I saw after I was diagnosed, we were talking about chemo and radiation. And I was like, well... Like that doesn't work. What's the al- like? What's the next step? What's the alternative? And he was like, "Well, you can't have radiation in the same spot twice." And I was like, "Okay, so what's the next step?" He's like, "Well, well then we would remove your voice box." <laughs> uh, that reaction, ladies and gentlemen, is on YouTube. And I mean, when she just... lo- loses it, I lost it. And oh yeah, it's hold making... on, we're losing it right now. Yeah, I mean, it was just like that's. It's like telling you. Your whole, everything that you've ever done your whole life is going to be... 
I mean, I guess I just think of it as like a like a violinist or a piano player, like getting their hands cut off. Yeah, it's my instrument. I'm a god awful singer, but I'm an efficient communicator. <laughs> And uh, it just was like, you got to be kidding me. And even I was like, of course, great, whatever. And I'm, I remember thinking, why can't I just have breast cancer? I'd be able to fucking eat. I'd lose a tit. Maybe take them both. Get new ones. I can't get a new voice box. And I'm yeah. not saying that anybody's cancer is easier because it is hellacious no matter what. But like... As I've described myself, you can imagine I like to eat. Yeah. <laughs> I was like, I like to eat. I like to talk, and it was just like so depressing. But I like started to be able to taste again. I'm not crying. You're crying. I know. I am crying. Oh, but I, I honestly got thought that if your mom was here, I would just be like crying. But like as soon as I would see Rose, I would just start oh. crying. So I was when you said she wasn't here coming, I was like, okay, I'll be able to like. Do the hot cha cha a little bit more. Although Des would have given you a hug. I know. <laughs> I was just like, I can't. I, I can't. Like this is gonna be too much. But, um, but yeah, I just, you know, I, I kind of mentioned this before again. Speaking about our moms, and to really like, to call Rose like an auntie is like not right. It's not because I mean, literally, there were times. Where she, it was like Robin, my mom's name was Robin. Her mom's name is Rose. They were both redheads. They were bestest the, friends. It, I mean, I have a photo that you should put up. I'm just gonna be like, here's all these photos of us. <laughs> it's your mom dressed as basically like a hippie version of Linda the Good Witch, uh-huh. and my mom dressed as like her version of Elvira. I think and, I can see. And this then picture you in my head. as a witch, also in like with like Wicked Witch of the West, green, green face, 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 and I'm Catwoman. That doesn't make any sense. But it's, like, the era of, like, of Michelle Pfeiffer as Catwoman. Oh. So, like, God, that, wait, what's that, like, Tim Burton, Batman 92? Batman Returns. Ooh. My favorite Batman they have nipples movie in, that one, in the right? world. Just a side note. Um, this person's going to hear this. I work with a girl who doesn't know who Michelle Pfeiffer what? is. What? And she I'm really- like, you're 27. You should know who Michelle she Pfeiffer is. She was Miss Orange County Fair when she was 17. Really? Yes. Well, now you know who Michelle... I'm looking at the mic again. Oh, now no. you know. She's pissed at this mic about Michelle Pfeiffer, you guys. <laughs> I, I, I mean, my coworkers will probably listen to this, and I give them all a hard time because I'm the only female saleswoman at my job, and I work with a bunch of salesmen. Whatever. Uh, one of them is a kid. Katie's 22. But yesterday... That's a kid. Yesterday I sold two and a half cars and I was like two and a half cars. Well, well, you do like a half deal with the person and you split the sale. And uh, I was like, they call it a hat trick, which apparently in hockey, if you make, if you as an individual make three goals, as a person who's highly athletic and is, it, like likes to play sports, I don't know shit about actual sports, <laughs> but so a hat trick is when you score three goals in hockey, whatever, and it's like a big deal. So, because oftentimes salesmen are also like professional sports enthusiasts, Mm -hmm. if you sell three of something in a day, they call it a hat trick too. Well, yesterday, because we are just off of uh, National Indigenous People Day, oh, formerly known as uh, Christopher Columbus Day, is that what that (laughs) is? I didn't know that. Um, I was like, I almost had a Nina, a pizza, and a Santa Maria. (laughs) And one of the sales guys that's my age was like, Eric's not going to know what that means. And I was like, he's not going to know what the Nina, the pizza, and the Santa Maria. I mean, what the hell? Don't they learn that in school? But then I realized. Probably not Probably anymore. not, because Christopher Columbus is a rapist, pillager, thief, and lazy fuck. So they probably don't. Anyway, so in terms of, I think it's still more upsetting that she doesn't know who Michelle Pfeiffer is. Yeah. <laughs> so... But yeah, girlfriend. Uh, anyway, back to our moms, I guess. But um, back to our moms, I guess. <laughs> it. Uh, so you're talking about that picture that you. Saw. Oh my god! Yeah. yeah, I just like. We talked a little bit about this prior to being sick, and this is gonna get woo woo people. So just get on board. Prior to being sick, I always, if I couldn't have a clear mental picture of a plan or an event. 
And that's like, hey, let's go to San Diego. If I can't picture us in San Diego, we're not going to fucking get, we're not going. But if I can picture us in Old Town eating, like, rock candy and having cheese enchiladas, then we'll be there. And if I can't picture it, it's usually just, like, white blank Mm -hmm. or, like, static. But since being sick, it's become, like, laser-like focus. And so, in a career, in a job like sales, there's a lot of... uh, people listen to a lot of like self-help books and mm-hmm. there's a lot of like superstition behind okay well in order to make this sale I have to do this this and this step people have their like rituals is mm-hmm. a good word for it woo woo yeah you know and people, <laughs> yeah. people have rituals for everything you know what I mean like and so I recently with the like either the clarity of a picture or the clearness of the static was like I'm gonna get some tarot cards <laughs> <laughs> and I started pulling cards every morning and every night for myself and my husband. I would just pull one card and we would talk about how it relates to our day. And I do believe that there's power in the energy that goes into my deck, in mm-hmm. anyone's deck. But I also believe that it's a suggestion. <laughs> and you read it as, okay, well, however the day may unfold, I have this, this suggestion from universe, power, energy, goddess, whatever you want to call it. But at the end of the day, you're your own person, mm-hmm. and you are a fully realized character that can make fully realized decisions. But to have a little bit of guidance helps. And so then, being an overzealous, intense person, I was like, oh, I'm fully accepting my witchness. <laughs> I better make a book of shadows. But it, <laughs> I started, I, I mean, really, like, you could, like, over there on the table, you can see that I'm drawing the wheel of the year with the witchy Ooh. holidays. <laughs> And this is just, it's just all or nothing. But when I got sick, I was, like, laying in bed with my husband one day. My husband, Collier, uh, is a researcher. or He's a, he's a, an academic in every sense of the word. Mm-hmm. And I am a person who also ended up getting my GED. I have the highest GED score in Minnesota history, just nice. so you all know. But I did go to college and the whole thing. Uh, but I'm not a school person. I don't, whatever. I don't like to read things that don't interest me and... However, so Collier did all this research on the the statistics of my survival, <laughs> and I was like, "Oh no, I'm not. It's not gonna fucking take me. I'm too competitive. I don't like to lose. I'm a sore loser, and I'm just hard headed. Mm-hmm. I'm young. <laughs> I'm not. It's not <laughs> gonna take me. And I was like, all of the years of sports and sales and selfishness have led up to me." fighting for my life mm-hmm. and I'm not going to lose this game either and then he was like well do you know what the survival rate is and I was like, like, I, don't care I was like tell me I don't care and he was like 5 to 12 percent and I was like I'm the youngest the strongest and the meanest bitch that's ever had this fucking cancer I'm not dying and to get my first pet scan back with complete resolution <laughs> do it again but like in that <clears throat> you know what it reminds me of in the man voice uh, complete resolution <laughs> it reminds me of was she a great big fat person? <laughs> Sorry, if Make any of you know sure Silence. You can use my phone. Yeah, this is the third <laughs> Silence of the Lambs reference. Because I did the. Oh, uh, yeah. I won't throw semen on your face like mugs or whatever the fuck that guy's <laughs> name is. Uh, maybe I will. Um, but, so I don't know. I just like that level of intensity, I think, as somebody who's known me for 30 years, can probably. I mean, tell me, was I have I always been this way where I've been like unable to accept when I'm wrong, which is, I think, oh, yeah. the part. Yeah. God, we got into a fight once, you guys, over whose underwear was whose, and to this day, when I think about it, I go, what the fuck? <laughs> Couldn't I have just been like, even if they weren't my underwear, who cares? <laughs> anyway, but, like, I just have always been hard-headed and determined, and I think that embracing, looking at that through a witchy, like, spiritual way, is saying, no, I've decided that this is how it is. I've decided that this is the truth because I am knowing it. Mm -hmm. And I'm speaking it into existence for better or worse. And there are plenty of people that don't like me. And I think statistically it's impossible to get along with everybody, especially when you are an Aquarius with a Sagittarius rising and an Aries moon. That's a a tough person to be around. (laughs) That's me, people, (laughs) just so you know. If you want to look up my birth chart, you're going to go, whew, too much. (laughs) But there were definitely times that I felt self-pity, where I was laying on this couch that we're sitting on thinking, 
Why? Why? Yeah. And there are very few times in my life when I've gone, why me? And that was the scariest thing for me. I still didn't think I was going to die. I just thought, this is fucking painful, inconvenient. It's not good for my finances. It's not good for my credit score. (laughs) My fucking empathetic, loving, generous, emotional sponge husband is taking on more of this than I am as a caregiver. And we had friends come from Minnesota to take care. And I, you know, I'd still try to do my little fucking song and dance to be funny. And I had to have friends go, hey, it's okay. Mm -hmm. It's okay to be vulnerable. And I just, that was hard. I don't like, I didn't like that. Ooh. I regret not coming down here. Oh, Jesus. Shut up. (laughs) I regret not coming down here in the midst of it because... So many weeks I was like, I gotta go see Megan. I gotta go see Megan. I gotta go see Megan. I didn't want to because be seen. I know. I was, <laughs> in my head, I was like, I have to see her. What if she does die? I have to see her. Yeah. So, like, I do. Oh my gosh. Stop no, it. No, no. I mean, I do. Um, well, maybe reg- I shouldn't say regret because I'm not one to regret a whole but, lot. Well, of this things, is the thing. But, go back to being the guilt of being a parent that we were talking about before. Yeah. The guilt that you must take on as a parent is insane to me to be a hundred percent selfless for another person i mean i'm married and we were just talking about how much i love my plants and my dogs <laughs> and I, my husband is the perfect husband for me perfect partner for me i cannot imagine completely giving myself to somebody in that i mean just just and then you look back on being a kid and you're like i was a fucking hell beast Yes. And then then on top of it, the self-inflicted guilt that you as a parent put on yourself. I think that obviously as a sibling, as sisters, which is, I mean, there's just no other way to describe what our relationship is like other than that. We had fucking bunk beds, you guys. And apparently shared underwear. (laughs) (laughs) So, I mean, I get it. So, I'm an avoider, too. I didn't... My mom's nursing home was three miles from our house in Minneapolis and as it got worse I went less and less to the point where it was like month and a half between visits but she didn't fucking remember yeah so I mean I get I get that guilt but at the I was also able to say I need to take my space because this is happening to somebody that I care about that's been there my whole life mm-hmm. I've been there more of your life than I haven't and to see that is scary but then you also have that now this parental guilt that i'm as we've seen is now flowing over into other areas yeah i can't imagine that yeah I'm, i don't want to be a parent people I'm, so that's probably I'm, also why i'm like ugh, ugh. i'm working on it because i i know a lot of it is self self-inflicted guilt. I, I don't think there's a i don't think there's a way to fix that yeah. every parent in history unless they're a complete sociopath feels guilt feels guilt yeah for me, it's I feel guilty if I'm at work and I'm away from Des, and I feel guilty if, if you're not making if money. If I'm not making money, oh my god! And which contributes to Des growing up comfortable, like yeah. yeah, to be to to be yeah yeah. So it's like it's always there, and I I asked um, pretty much all the the girls at work at shit, <laughs> and I was like, does it ever go away? They're like, no, and they have like teenagers, and I'm like. But it's just, it's like constant guilt, always there. That's mixed, you know, mixed and mashed in with, with the unconditional love that I have for Des. You know what I like to ask parents that have multiple kids? But Who's your favorite? <laughs> <laughs> and they always go, oh, I, I, and I go, I know you have one. I don't care who it is, just tell me. <laughs> well, when I have a, a second or third or fourth, you can ask me that. I'll tell you which one's my favorite when you have all the almost definitely okay. have one. <laughs> but yeah, I don't know. I just can't. I mean, that makes me sound really selfish, I'm sure. But like, it's not selfish. When people that don't know me well ask, oh, man, are you guys going to have kids? And I go, no. And they go, why? I go, because I like to sleep and travel. Well, well, I'm sure there's things that you like that you miss. I want those things more than I want children. Yeah. And that really upsets people. And then the people that it really upsets, I wonder, do you spend a a lot of time missing 
memory, like missing opportunities. Like, yeah. like, wait, like, yeah. I, I don't know if jealous is the right word, but like, envious, whatever, of something else. Yeah. So I, I and I don't, I don't, you know, it's not my business, but I'm not bragging about being like I know what I want. <laughs> but a lot of people shouldn't be parents, and a lot yeah. of people end up having children and not being good at it and really fucking somebody up. <laughs> Yeah. And then, and so, not that I think I would do that. I just, I think if I know for certain, then why? But when I got sick, Collier and I were like, fuck, we better, we better harvest some eggs <laughs> and, and get a sperm sample. My husband's like 13 years older than me. So like, we panicked and then we were like, what? <laughs> what? <laughs> but like, even, like even every once in a while, if I'm being honest, I'll be like, oh God. Do I want to be a parent? Yeah. And then I'm like, no, yeah. I just, I just felt like my body wasn't mine for three months, and I was, I felt yeah. a fucking existential crisis about it. Yeah. Nine months, and then having to push something the size of a watermelon through something the size of a pea <laughs> seems horrible. I so I don't know. I just I don't. Well, here's what I don't get. Every single woman I've ever met, that, and I say woman because women are the ones that have pressure yeah, to yeah. have to want yeah. kids. Right, and men men seem weird if they're like, yeah, I want kids. You're like, you, yeah. you fucking pedophile? What do you mean you want to yeah. be around kids? I hate that. Uh, anyway, go on. So what I don't get is every single woman I've met that doesn't want kids never judges the people who do want kids. Oh. The people who do want kids that get upset that a woman doesn't want kids, that doesn't make sense to me. Oh, yeah. I mean, if you want to go down the path of the patriarchy and the hypocrisy, we can fucking <laughs> I just, this I don't witchy get it. Like, gotta, if you don't uh, want kids, I'm not going to judge you. You don't want kids. Well, there's who a, gives an ass shit? problem. I do wonder, I mean, listener, Richard... <laughs> My husband is, I can't wait to tell him that you keep saying his name. <laughs> my husband is 6'5 and lean. And I have been gifted with such athletic prowess that I feel like if we did have a kid, we could have a professional athlete and I would be living a very comfortable life in 18 years from then. But I'm not really willing to commit <laughs> that investment of my body. And I don't know. I don't know. what, But like... I do think about what I would be like as a parent, and I think I would be a lot like my mom. Mm-hmm. But I, I don't know with technology and stuff. That's also the other thing is that I like I'm a controlling person. I've you? Got, I've got a lot of ideas about how things no. are going to be, and I can't imagine. I mean, I don't care if I have a 12 year old son or a 12 year old daughter, whatever. There's a hormonal thing that happens when they become curious about sex. I'm not nervous about kids looking at porn on the internet. Mm -hmm. But I am nervous about kids going on the internet to find human connection. And then it being the wrong human for them to be connecting with. Yeah. It's scary. So it's not just that I'm like, ooh, ooh, kids. It's like, there's, there's like so much giving and like that guilt and fear. And there's enough of that in the world. I can't imagine like constantly be worrying about oh, shit, is there going to be a school shooter today? Yeah. At my kid's fucking elementary school? Yeah. Like, what? My sister has a son that is, what's, August 1st, he turned 12. So he'll be, he's in seventh grade now, I think. And he doesn't walk home from school, and his his school's, like, less than a mile from their house in a very affluent Orange County city. Safe, white racist, conservative, whatever. Yeah. But she still doesn't feel safe with him walking home. And I'm kind of like, what the hell? Let the kid walk home. But I then I'm like, well, I don't know. Like, maybe don't. <laughs> like, yeah. at what point do you, like, have to take the jump to be like, now you have freedom? I can't imagine trying to decide that. We're in that age group where both of us can be like, <clears throat> back in my day. <laughs> well, yeah, because we'd think, play in the street. And well, CPS yeah. wouldn't be called on our parents. Yeah, and like... It was like, just be home before dark, before cell phones. Net, like, a parent would be, yeah, exactly. So they'd be like, they let her, they let their daughter go to the park. <laughs> yeah. Can you believe it? Get the fuck over here and arrest these Do you people. remember when we went to our friend's house? Yes, the day before Mother's Day. Yeah, and your mom showed up at the door, like, 
frantically crying, have you seen two little girls? <laughs> and I'm like, oh, did we forget to tell her we left? <laughs> but I get it now. Like, I, I, I get it now. But back then we were just like, what, Mom? We're at her friend's house. She wrote down our phone number. Because I was like, I didn't know our phone number. She wrote down our phone number on, like, a pretty large piece of paper. And the only thing I was allowed to say out loud for, like, what felt like two days was our phone number. Really? And to this day, I think I might remember the phone number to that house. Let me let me look at the... I remember it. Is it... Hold on. 64656683? No, that's a different... That's my next phone number. What is it? Do you have to look at the numbers? 969. 969-866-8664? 8224. Shit! Close, though. You knew it was... Yeah, I was like, ah! <laughs> And she, I would go to say something, I'd be like, but my, what's our phone number? <laughs> For days. I didn't know that. Oh, yeah. In the back of her red Jeep Cherokee that she had. Oh, the every time I see one of those, I think of your mom. I see some that I know, looks I just like hers. I know, isn't that crazy? But yeah, I don't know. Let's that, talk about voguing. Okay, hold on. The thing is, now that drag queens are super popular, <laughs> and people are, like, more mainstream than... Be the two women that were friends with, like, our moms were friends with gay men. So there's always, like, gay men in the house and queer stuff when we were kids. So, like, voguing and Madonna and knowing what AIDS was as a young age was normal in our house. But now, all of a sudden, RuPaul has, like, really brought drag and with the politics we are and gender expression to the fucking forefront, it's funny to hear people go, oh yeah, voguing. And I'm like, hold on, let me show you a dance. <laughs> no one wants to see it. And I don't remember it that great, but it's just, it's funny to think of like, <sighs> I was going to play that song at the moon dance. Oh yeah. I clearly I was I, like, well, Megan White, please report to the stage, even though there's no stage. I would be like, my whole life is a stage. I'm ready. <laughs> it's all led up to this. My poor husband would have been like, oh, for fuck's sake. <laughs> He's like, not now. But yeah, I. Well, uh, what would that have entailed? What would that have looked like, the moon the moon dance? The moon so, dance? Uh, she had a band right here. As you guys. And uh, she Go had, to the rerewind.com. Wait, what is that? Rerewindband.com. <laughs> <laughs> I'll I, put it in the show notes. I don't have any dot coms, just so everybody knows. That's okay. But you have apps. Oh, plenty. Yeah. Plenty. Do you want them to follow you on Facebook, too, or just Instagram? I just don't do Facebook that often. Okay. Uh, I have at Baby Broccoli, which is my, like, main one. And if you're into uh, vintage designer handbags, at, oh, yeah, yeah. at Chastain Vintage is uh, my Instagram for my handbag refurbishing that I do. I just love a good purse. I also, I think because of my witchy powers, have the best thrifting luck. I found a 1960s Gucci purse for $2 at an estate sale. Really? Yeah. Do you fix zippers? No. Damn it. You should see some of my jackets. What is this purse? It was from Ross. It's old. I just started using it last week. I haven't used... I've been using a diaper bag for two and a half Isn't years. Isn't that kind of nice, though, when you come back to a purse that's been worn in? Yeah. It's like... It feels like... I have a few floppy bags like that where it's... In fact, I moved in... I moved back into one recently, and it's just like, oh, this feels... They have, like, an essence to them. Yeah. I like putting And there's no in wipes inside and diaper cream. Or, like, formula powder... Oh, yeah, he's way past that. Does he eat, like, whole foods? Mm -hmm. Does he have teeth? Mm -hmm. What age do they get teeth? Does he have teeth? teeth. He's two and a half. <laughs> well, I don't know. I mean, I didn't have hair until I was two and a half. Really? Yeah. Oh, yeah, that's like a small human. Yeah. It looks... It. I'm sorry. He looks... <laughs> it's what? funny how all of a sudden they look like tiny adults. Like, yeah. for a while they look like mushy potatoes. And they all kind of yeah. look the same. And then at some point, I guess probably around two, all of a sudden you're like, you have your own personality, your own opinions, and you are a miniature adult. Yeah. Scary. He, he had a growth spurt like last week and it was all in his legs. Whoa! So like all painful? of a sudden he's got these long legs and I'm like, 
who are you? Like, where's my baby? Was that painful for him? Like, was he having growing I think, pains? Yeah, he he was very grumpy. It's like achy. Can yeah. you ever feeling growing pains? Like, literally feeling like achy and weird? I don't, but I remember getting stretch marks from growing tits overnight and hips. God. In fourth grade, it's, microphone. It's not at all the hormones in the dairy and meat that we were eating in the 90s before they realized it was terrible. Maybe it is. <laughs> I still eat dairy. <laughs> Why do you? I, I do too. And I'm not like, I mean, I have like craft like string cheese in the fridge. Yeah. So I'm not like an annoying vegetarian. No one's judging. But uh, I do wonder about, like, you know when kids were less precious? Like, I think we were the last generation of kids that were less precious. Mm-hmm. And the generation before us, and even bef- the one before them, they were just like roommates to their parents. The kids now are like a like a gift. Yeah. Before they were like, oh shit, have you eaten? <laughs> okay, well, I don't know. Maybe you can make yourself some ramen. <laughs> That's true. We knew how to make ramen yeah, and macaroni yeah. and cheese. Did we not? Oh yeah, eggs. Did you? We made grilled cheese too, right? Yep. I yeah. made scrambled eggs with cheese a lot as a kid. I did laundry when I was seven. Well, I taught myself how to do it, and I oh my washed gosh. one sock. But, you know, <laughs> I did laundry. I have a memory of going grocery shopping with your mom. Uh-oh. And I, I feel like it was just me and her, which doesn't make any sense, but it might <laughs> make sense. I don't know. And we came home, and we had a pretty big kitchen. And it had, like, a high countertop, but it was, like, a weirdly open kitchen. Yeah. And all of the grocery bags were on the counter, and I was trying to be helpful and money was tight at our house. Very tight. Two single mothers living yeah. together. My mom worked for the airlines making seven twenty five an hour. <laughs> I never knew that. Yeah. So I went to, I was trying to help, and I grabbed the milk, like a jug of milk, and mm-hmm. I dropped it, and it spilled all over everything. And poor Rose just stood and looked at it and started crying. And then I, <laughs> and then I was like, <gasps> Uh, and then we were both crying, and there was all this spilled milk. And then you, I didn't know this thing. There's no use crying over <laughs> spilled milk. But as an adult who has to pay bills and doesn't have three kids that I'm like, responsible for, I disagree. I think sometimes you have to cry over the spilled yeah. milk. Yeah. I didn't cry over spilled milk until I knocked over my first bottle of breast milk that I worked really hard to pump <laughs> out. Is that painful? Pumping? Any part of that. Um, that well, good question comes back to when do they get teeth? Well, he, I stopped. Okay, so I was an exclusive pumper. Oh. So for well, 11. I, I mean, I don't, I don't know. I'm not, I know there's he, all kinds he of he like. He had a tongue tie and breastfeeding him was like. Could you have that too? That your tongue doesn't. It's like this thing. It was right here on him. And so if he were to stick out his tongue, it would be like the tip was still behind his teeth. They'd be like, eh. Yeah, so... Weird. Your kid's weird. I don't know how much you know about breastfeeding, but, like... Not a lot. <laughs> you have... the When you breastfeed, the whole areola and the nipple go in their mouth. Ugh. Like that. And if it's done right, it doesn't hurt. But he, he had latching issues, so it would be only the nipple in his <laughs> mouth. And it was, like, thousands of needles going into my nipple every time I breastfed him. So... And I still wanted him to get the milk, so I pumped... Yeah. For 11 months. Eight times a day. Eight times a day? Eight times a day. H- how long and, does it take per session? Um, like 25 minutes. Yeah. When I was on a feeding tube, I would, I was, so each carton of formula mm-hmm. was 500 calories. But if I did it too fast, I would immediately just throw up. And so... It was really thick, like I'm assuming formula can be. Mm -hmm. And so I would like dilute it, and then it would take me like two fucking hours to go slow enough to get nutrients in. But then I was only doing two a day because that's four hours I'd be sitting on the couch feeding. That's what Mm -hmm. I call it. Feeding. I, I need to feed. I'm feeding. But it was like... The doctors would be like, you need to get more calories. I was like, I don't have enough time. (laughs) Yeah. Not that I was doing much. Yeah. But, like, that's just so much time spent. That's a lot of time. And just a side note to all the moms 
Formula. I'm not judging Formula. He had Formula too. Um, and I did after I ran out of breast milk, but um, I figured since I make, I can make breast milk. He can have the breast milk. What the fuck is with parent? Like who? You're a parent providing nutrients for your kid. Yeah. Why eat them people, however you can? Why do they get so? Why do people get so upset about it? I don't know. That's the other thing about being a parent. I don't know. I what? think if your baby is fed, then you're winning. If you're, have you seen Train Spotting? Yes. If you're not at Train Spotting level, baby neglect, I then we're doing good. Okay, <laughs> that's very low standards. But like, it seems like that's how people are responding to like the different yeah. ways of providing love and nutrients to you. And then, yeah, that and like. He's not in preschool yet, is he? No. Does he go to daycare? Uh, just when I teach my classes. Yeah. Okay. But, like, are, are you, like, part of a mommy group where there's, like, mommy culture? Yeah. yeah. That seems like a nightmare. <laughs> I tried to do, like, the mommy and me thing. Yeah. And I didn't know it cost money. I thought it was, like, a free just hang out with other... I don't... I don't... I don't give a fuck. I'm yeah. Not that seems like a racket. So, as a person who sells cars, that sounds like a con. <laughs> <laughs> Look, I'll sell you an extended warranty on your car, but I'm not going to charge you to hang out with other parents. I just don't... Uh, yeah, it just seems like... If you're in this, like, sisterhood of being at the exact stage of child developmental experience as a parent, don't you feel your own insecurities and listen to your gut on how you think your child that emerged from your body to be earthbound. Mm-hmm. Earthbound. <laughs> I said that to somebody once, and they were like, it, it's a little while before we actually put them on the ground, you know? And I yeah. was like, hilarious. <laughs> I was like, good point. Um, but, like, I don't know. Like, don't, like, again, coming back to this, like, witchy thing, like, I can understand that there would, there's this, like, beauty in it. And if you found a group of people... They do it a little bit differently than you, but they're following their gut. Why make it a competitive, yeah, hateful, I, judgmental space? With my experience as a mommy and all the beautiful and horrible emotions that come along with it, I think more moms need to have each other's backs. Yeah. Because, like, it doesn't matter how you're raising your kid. And as long as you're not raising your kid to be, like, a murderer, or, and it's like... As long as if your not- kid is fed, if your kid is loved, however you're raising them is fine. That's up to you. But, like, have more, have people's backs. Like, we need each other for the emotional yeah. support. And I, I say moms, but I, men too. Like, yeah. there's male mommies. Yeah. yeah oh, I'm going to stand up because my ass hurts from driving. I'm thinking about this parenting thing about, be- wow, that's some isolation in the butt cheeks. Thank you. Like, I think about, Robin and Rose quite different very similar Mm -hmm. and it was like a communal situation it was like there would be times I'm sure when we would have family powwows and it where they couldn't always have agreed on things but I'm sure they took into account each other's opinions on parenting yeah and we're perfect so that worked out exactly we even talked about Tony Oh, yeah. When you mentioned that picture, I'm thinking, where was Tony when this picture was taken? Probably made him take it, that poor guy living with the four of us. Tony's my smelly brother. I think of Sega Genesis when I think of Tony. Sega! Remember, my grandma was pissed at my dad for buying us a Sega. That's my abusive grandmother that I talked about in episode two of the Unveiling the Beast podcast. Yep, that's a prime... She, she's a prime example of somebody who didn't get enough therapy with their own self-loathing exactly. and inflicted it upon other people. Yep. I'm just going to get right... I'm just going to yep. nail that there one on go. the head. <laughs> Can you say that one more time, please? For the people she, in the back? She didn't get enough therapy of her own, so she inflicted all of the self-loathing she had onto the people who she should have loved and cared for the most. The, Although, you know what I think of? Every time my gas tank is at, like, half full, I'm like, I better get gas. Because your grandma was like, it's on empty. And I'm like, you have half a tank. And she's like, we got to get gas. <laughs> it's like a thing that I remember. But... It's so Any- funny. Anyway. But, uh, anyway. Don't you so, yeah, she, she was pissed at my dad for getting us a uh, Sega Genesis. And to make, thing, to make it more educational, she bought us a game called Math Blasters. 
where we would blast asteroids in space to create math problems. Man, she really had it all figured out. Not. If you guys could see the eye roll. <laughs> oh my god, she just was so mean. She was mean. And I get it, you know, there's internalized self-hatred there, but uh, the things that she would say to you especially, and to me if I was around, about our bodies was yep. completely unreasonable and cruel. We, yep. It just was like, who the fuck do you think you are? Yep. And I I mean, it didn't. I've always been kind of like, excuse me, why do you feel like you can say that to me? And especially not as her actual grandkid. As I got older, yeah. I was like, yeah, I'm. You, yeah, we were kids when she was saying this stuff. Yeah, and like seven and nine. I said in another interview I did that I, I let her make me cry for the last time when I was nineteen, and then I was just like, fuck yeah. you, get out of my life. And um, after my divorce diet. When I first got God, into fitness, geez, yep. and I got really small for me, yeah, because you know me, I've been bigger most Same. of my life. So I got, I was like the smallest I've ever been, and she goes, how much do you weigh now? I was Rude! Like, I was like 163, she goes, well, you could still lose about three more pounds, but you look good, I guess. I was like, I got a compliment! I know, I'm, give me a donut. Eat a donut I bought. You know what, it's shit like that, it's just... It's unreasonable. It's like people keep saying, well, not anymore, but for a while people were saying, you got to go visit your grandma. We don't know. We don't know how long she has. This might be her last Christmas. This might be her last Thanksgiving. This might be her last birthday. And they've been saying that for like five years. And I'm like, do you remember how she treated us? So no, as I'm a queer person. I'm in a heteronormative marriage. Are you gay? I'm half gay, but I dance in a gay, gay way. No, uh, (laughs) I'm half gay, and I've ended up in a heteronormative marriage, which means that two people that don't know the cues or won't just ask me, I look like I'm in a straight relationship. Uh, Disclaimer, this is going to get political. (laughs) After the election, my uh, uncles, who I live near in Minnesota who I would spend holidays with, who my husband and I would spend holidays with, were both huge Trump supporters. And uh, there is a podcaster and a columnist named Dan Savage. Mm -hmm. And he, like, years ago in the Bush administration, was like, as gay people, as people that are just not, that are outsiders in your own family, as fucking adults, the only currency you have with your family is your time. And you know what? It's valuable. And if you don't want to spend your time on somebody who makes you feel less than, smaller, and even if that person, in this case, doesn't remember, has dementia, that doesn't mean that she wasn't fucking cruel. And to you, it can be, buzzword, triggering. Mm -hmm. And you don't need any other reason. There's no reason to subject yourself in a world where we're constantly being bombarded with things telling us that we're less than, not worthy enough, or not smart enough to have somebody that's supposed to be your ally Mm -hmm. have said that yeah you can fucking say yep you know what i'm focusing on loving myself enough so that this child that i'm raising never has to feel any doubt about how much i love them and how much i love myself which is only going to make them love themselves more yep and that's a good point as she takes a bite of that delicious (laughs) freak that was the best donut by the way that i ate um Desmond has five grandparents. I had one. The one I had other ones, but my mom's dad died before I was born. My yeah. dad's mom died before I was born, and I had my grandma. And you know, everybody's oh, grandma's sweet. They bake cookies, and I'm like, not my fucking grandma. Oh. She calls me fat, and she yeah, she, she starves me because I'm walkers at eight years old. Yeah, so as I th- say through a mouthful of donuts. My son, I <clears throat> want. I wanted to make sure well, yeah, really. that he has grandparents that have his back. Hold mm-hmm. on, I'm going to cry because this is so important. Yeah. They have his back, they support him, and they fucking give him cookies. Yeah. And ice cream. And I told my mom, she, every every once in a while, she'll still ask, oh, can I give him this? I'm like, you give him what you want to yeah. give him. You're his grandma. If you start, and in my experience as a person who struggled with weight, by the way, side note, are not that size matters, but both of our moms were thin, 
thin women. I was bigger than my mom yep. at 10. Same. Same. I yeah. couldn't fit into my mom's pants. Exactly. How how triggering is that? Right. And <laughs> when my mom died, my husband said, maybe now that your mom is no longer here, you'll shed some of the weight that you've been carrying because she, cause my mom was tough on me about my weight too. Not like your grandma. But she just didn't understand how to be a parent to a person with weight issues. Mm-hmm. Her mom was tiny. She was tiny. Whatever. And so, like, having somebody else police your food triggers very unhealthy relationships with food. Mm-hmm. And so, like, sneaking food became a thing for me. And, like, self-sabotaging. I mean, to be a, like, serious athlete... I was exerting enough, but I still was the biggest girl on my soccer team. And it was always like, well, how come? Well, because I'd fucking sit in front of the fridge when I'd get home at night or after my mom would go to bed and eat all of the pasta salad. That was, mm-hmm. you know what I mean? Like, there was no, like, turning it off. And so, like, with the binge- binging and stuff. And so, learning to eat intuitively is a thing that I still have to do. And it is not a thing I can, I, I mean, I, like, I track my food. It doesn't mean that I'm, like, starving myself. If I've eaten too many calories the first third of the day, but I'm at work all day literally running around, I'm like, I have a headache because I'm hungry. I'm not going to be like, well, fit, my fitness pal says I've had too much, but it's still hard to know, like, what's a serving size of cereal? Well, if you fucking weigh out a third, three-fourths of a cup of cereal, you're like, that's not enough cereal! Have you read the book Intuitive Eating? No. Dude, get the book. Yeah. That book has, like, seriously changed my life. <laughs> like, I haven't weighed myself since May. I don't binge eat anymore. Wow. And, oh, there was another thing. Oh, I deleted my fitness pal after nine years of being obsessive with it. Yeah. Here's the thing. When I lost all that weight before, mm-hmm. I wasn't tracking my calories. That started after I lost all really? that weight. And I became obsessed. Like, it... It's not an eating disorder, but it's disordered eating. Yep, yep. Um, and disordered or fitness. Or, like, what do they call it? Like, a there's, like, a, a term for an undefined eating disorder. So, like, if you don't have anorexia yeah. nervosa or bulimia, yeah. if you just, just have issues with food. Yeah, disordered eating. Yeah. I, you have to get... I'm going to send you that book and a water bottle. That was a water bottle. Um, Someone's going to be like, I'm getting really mixed signals here in this package. Yeah. <laughs> so, and a lot of people, at first, they put it down because they're like, oh, intuitive eating, it says eat whatever you want, whenever you want. No, that's one principle of it is that you, it it gets it gets deep. Like, for a long time, I was like, well, diet. Well, eating your feelings? Well, yeah. That's a big But, burden. you know, dieting, people will lose the weight and then they gain it back. That's just 95% of people oh, yeah. who lose the weight will gain it back and then some. So I've always been like, no, I don't diet, but here I'm obsessively counting calories every day. And if I don't track every single thing I eat, including breath mints, Uh, then then I feel guilty. And I'm like, I'm like, okay, I didn't track today. That means I'm going to gain weight. Like, seriously? It's tough. So I deleted the app and my account on the app. I stopped weighing myself and then I started shrinking. (laughs) Not that shrinking is even the goal. Anyway, I'm going to send you that book. It's so good. Um, they are coming out with a new edition, but not till next Is year. it something that you were journaling in? What? You had a book that you were journaling in. Or, like, you had, like, a book that was, like, a guided journal or had pages that you were supposed to, like, write in as you read it. I feel like I need to go on your Instagram. Oh! Maybe you were um, just taking notes while reading this book. I mean, I do have the workbook with it. I'm only okay, halfway through the book. Oh, okay, yeah. There's so, a workbook. Yeah, I think I, I remember the I'll workbook. I'll read a chapter, and then I'll do that chapter in the workbook. And sometimes it takes a couple weeks. Like, it's... Yeah. Because it's... Can you send the workbook, too? Yeah. I like clerical work. Yeah. It's soothing. Me, too. It's... it's <laughs> <laughs> the most anti-feminist thing about me, but it's fuck. soothing. If I don't like filing papers and doing the dishes, I don't know. I mean, I, I just love... I love it. You want to come do my dishes? No, I... I no. I'm just kidding. <laughs> I was like, yeah, I gotta, I gotta clean send it. it to you. Because it's just... It's so... I feel like, you know, I've been doing this life coaching slash personal training thing because I've always been like we know what to do why aren't we freaking doing it 
so that's where the life coaching part comes in to the training part is yeah. because it's it's all mental and, and I'm you, like there's a piece missing though what's missing and somebody mentioned she didn't even mention the book but she's all have you ever heard of intuitive eating and then I just dove into it and I'm like this is the missing piece yeah I gotta read it yeah I and it was written in 1995 and it's just now starting wow to, yeah she's like 1995 she's like, I almost cut my ear off I'm like you know like then go <laughs> yeah yeah <laughs> I know. <laughs> She's like, this is not going to happen for me as an artist, as a creative. <laughs> well, Lainey, luckily people are being more honest with themselves and their issues with food. Yeah. Yeah, I, uh, I'd i love to read that. I think, you know, what we should do is I'll read it or I'll get through it. And then the next podcast that I'm on, because Richard, listener, <laughs> I'm inviting myself back as a regular. Do you still do Mary Kay stuff? I do. <laughs> I have I have like a handful of loyal customers. Yeah. I don't I don't do parties anymore, but like if one of them was like, "Hey, I want to do a party," would you then do it or would you have to like stock up on stuff in order to do that? No, you don't have to stock up. It's so easy to just You've been doing that forever. Order. I know. I love Mary. Like it's still all I use on my face. Really? Yeah, that's why I look 19. Microphone. <laughs> <laughs> the microphone's like, "Yep, yep." It's From what I can tell, she's right. But I think that's important, and if you're in direct sales, you need to love the product that you use. That's true. Actually, I would, yeah. this is a total, uh, if you don't believe in the product, like I, I sell Toyotas. Those cars sell themselves. Yeah, it's not a they lug- last forever. Yep, it's not a luxury vehicle, though they are becoming nicer and nicer, but there's just they're just a practical thing. There's a, not a whole lot of like romancing a Corolla. <laughs> So, Megan White, Megan White, is there anything we did? Well, I shouldn't say this because we're probably going to do five more <laughs> episodes. But I was going to say, is there anything we didn't talk about today? No, I think that I, is awesome. Oh, yeah, our wedding photo. Happy anniversary, by the way. Oh, yeah. In a few weeks, right? If you guys Google Wicker Man Wedding, your girl's wedding is the first one that shows up. Nice. I'm married on Halloween. Anyway. No, I think that, I mean, I anticipated this. Honestly, I anticipated it being mostly about cancer, our moms, <laughs> and, and, and like, relationship with food and fitness. So I yeah. think that's basically what we talked well, about. that's good. And I'm, yeah, I almost feel like, um, like I'm part of a cult, and I'm like, have you read Intuitive Eating? I, would, I can't wait. book, like, Yeah. I, Karen. Karen. Um, I would love to read it and do the workbook, and not, even if I don't finish it, because it, I am kind of a, I, I'm slow at those types of things. Mm -hmm. Um, Books. Well, the beauty is, like, it's (laughs) a slow slow process because it's, what, in your case, 22 years of programming? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, right? Totally. Yeah. So my mom's reading it, too, and she's having such a hard... She's having a hard time only because it's her whole life. It's 50 years of It's 25 years. Yeah. (laughs) (laughs) It, like, 25 years that you look, it looks like 25. Um, yeah, no, I would love it. I think that would be a perfect setup. <laughs> Bless you, Karen. Um, I think that would be a perfect setup for the yeah, next episode. Yeah, and then it's a, like, probably the right amount of time, and I'll come to you. I love, I almost just said, and it's a lie, I almost just said to you, I love homework. I don't know why those words almost came. <laughs> because you like I'm clerical. lying. She likes it clerical. I like, yeah, that's great. Oh. So I have one question for you. Yes. That I ask everybody at the end of each. I don't really even call these interviews because they're more just like, let's have a conversation. Yeah, there you go. At the end of each jam session, I ask everybody the same question. (laughs) If you had one piece of advice Mm -hmm. to give to the world, what would it be? What would it be? Um, My instinct is to say, don't take yourself too seriously. And um, I know that for people that aren't as theatrical or outgoing as you or I, that's easy. <laughs> that's easy for us to do. Mm-hmm. We were born to be... Goofballs? The goofball. Yeah, mm-hmm. the, the, you know what I mean? Um, but even people who might have just been like, shudder at me saying that, honestly, I'm telling you that the thing that got me through the death of both parents, illness, the loss of friends, breakups is to go to those low, low places, be ridiculous, 
with your fucking sorrow and then take a figurative or literal look in the mirror and be like, how dramatic! <laughs> you know what I mean? I mean, I'm not saying don't feel those feelings and don't act out the fucking hurt. Yeah. Throw yourself on the floor and have a tantrum and then go, I'm absurd. <laughs> Life is absurd. Yeah. And find the laughter again. And start from there. And you can get back to low, but as soon as you could... <laughs> Just make sure you always try to find laughter again. And um, if there are people that try to silence your laughter, remove them from your life. Yeah. Ladies and gentlemen, Megan White signing off. Until next time.